And yeah, it also happens to Gerard and TBH, but that doesn't discount the sexism of how it happens to me when it does. She's a malignant cunt. Excuse me for saying so. What's happening guys, Supernova here, back with another video, and uh, <laughs> this was gonna be a fun one to do. Uh, I had seen other videos made about this topic, which is actually where I learned about this from, uh, but I have my own thoughts about it, obviously. And uh, being that my channel is a little bit more R-rated and gives zero fucks about censorship or the YouTube algorithm, obviously I'm gonna be able to convey my thoughts in a much better way than the people who have to abide by the rules do. So. <laughs> <laughs> Without further ado, let's get into this shit. So if the thumbnail, title, and intro to this video didn't give you any clues as to why we're here, we're here because this individual by the name of Frosk, no idea if that's their real name or like some name they thought was cool for entertainment, uh, Frosk went off on this <laughs> rant about sexism uh, in her industry because of comments that were made to or about her, right? And... <laughs> I'm just going to preface by saying this, look, uh, she's a lesbian and she's feminist. And let me be straight with you guys. There's nothing wrong with being a lesbian or with being a feminist. However, in my personal experience, when you combine the two, the feminist lesbian tends to be one of the most toxic, angry motherfuckers on earth. Earth. They, I don't know what it is about the combination of lesbian and feminist, but they just become the most miserable, fucking angry people who complain about everything. Uh, and I don't know if that's your personal experience, but it seems to be mine. Uh, especially if they've got some color in their hair or some shit like that, right? And again, I'm not trying to paint with a broad brush here. I'm sure there are many feminist lesbians who are perfectly wonderful people. But, it seems to me, at least the loud vocal ones are fucking among the angriest people, most miserable people on this fucking planet. But anyway, let's, let's play the video and hear what this bitch had to say. Oh my god, did you just call her a bitch? How dare you? Uh, yeah, I called her a bitch. It's my channel and I'll call the bitch whatever the fuck I want to. Anyway, let's continue. Also, before we start... I want to let you know that this clip that I'm about to show you, I didn't have to like scrub through an entire X-Play Live and then find the section where she was saying this shit. No, X-Play actually grabbed the clip themselves and uploaded it as a separate video titled Frost Takes On Treatment of Women in Gaming, parentheses, must watch, exclamation point, parentheses. Oh, people are watching. Uh, and for the most part, it seems like they're making fun of it, but... Hey, X-Play, you got your wish. But I just wanted to throw that out there so you can understand that X-Play are proud of what she's saying here. They're proud of what she's done here. They're not looking at this as potentially divisive or off-putting to probably 80 to 90% of their audience. No, they are proud of this. So I just wanted to throw that out there as well because when I saw that they had uploaded this as an individual clip, I was like, wow. That's fucking ridiculous, but I'm going to go into that a little bit later on in this video. And you're going to have to cut this B-roll in a second because it's, uh, it's done. And what I think, I do think that there is a larger discussion about Red Dead Online and that we need to have eventually about game design versus immersive experience and comparing the Red Dead Online multiplayer experience versus the solo player one. But I actually want to talk about something so much more important than Red Dead Online. Sexism in gaming. Yes, because that's exactly why your viewers are watching. They didn't tune in to hear about Red Dead Redemption Online, no. They got their ears cupped, held to their screens, waiting with bated breath to hear you drop your wisdom and knowledge regarding sexism in gaming. Get the fuck out of here. Nobody tuned in to hear this shit. But since we're here, let's hear what you fucking have to say. In joining G4... Woo! Yeah! This is not where I thought we were going, I know, but I'm here. I had I'm no here. idea. I'm listening. Yeah. 
And joining G4, I was ecstatic to be part of something that I grew up watching as a child. But every time G4 is brought up in various channels, even in this YouTube channel, we have the chat in front of us, I can see you, without a doubt, there will be backlash because I'm not as bangable as the previous host. It's somehow- Talk to him, Frost! It has somehow been expected that you can talk about how much you jerked off to women as a compliment. That's it's weird. not a compliment. It's weird. It's dehumanizing and it's weird. Women do not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Morgan Webb, Olivia Munn did not exist to be nice on the eyes for you. Now pause right here because I don't disagree with everything she just said. Like the idea of dudes messaging whether or not they did or did not jerk off to her. Okay, that's a little bit weird. Like if you jerk off to someone, you can do it without telling them. Like the only time it's kind of even somewhat normal to let someone know you jerked off to them is if it's like your girlfriend or your wife or your fuck buddy because you already have that type of relationship. But to tell a total stranger whether you did or did not jerk off to them or would or would not jerk off to them, a little bit fucking weird. Now I'm gonna go out on a limb though and say that she's upset that dudes are saying they're not jerking off to her probably because she looks like fucking Machine Gun Kelly but <laughs> that is neither here nor there. Uh, if you are one of these people who messages strangers to let them know whether or not you jerked off to them, a little bit weird, maybe you should stop that. Now, as to this idea that women don't exist to be nice on the eyes to men, um, sorry, but wrong, bitch. That's kind of one of the main reasons why women exist. At the end of the day, we're animals. We're just mammals. And women exist to be attractive enough to men so that the men want to mate with them in order to continue the survival and population of the human race. That's how it works with any animal, with any species. They need to mate. Now, with other species, it may not be based on looks. It may be based on some stupid shit like a dance that a spider does so that the female will let him fuck her. But in the human race, it comes down to looks. Yes, personality and other shit does come and play its own part. But it usually starts with looks, and it's not just a one-way street. Where women have to be nice enough on the eyes for the men to want to fuck them, men also have to be nice enough on the eyes for the women to want to let them fuck them. Right? It's not a one-way street. This is kind of the basics of how the world works, how life works. In order for humans to keep get created, men and women need to fuck. And you know what? Maybe you don't understand this because... As a lesbian, you're not participating in the in the process of continuing the human race. But hey, it is what it is. Now, to the idea that Olivia Munn and Morgan Webb didn't exist to be nice on the eyes. Bitch, are you retarded? Yes, I called you retarded with a capital fucking R. Get this bitch a helmet. Olivia Munn and Morgan Webb did not exist to be nice on the eyes to men. I'm sorry, Machine Gun Kelly, but no, you are wrong. And see, the thing is, they can be nice on the eyes to men and do a good job. The reason why people like Olivia Munn and Morgan Webb is on top of the fact that they were nice on the eyes to men, they were also good at their job and they were funny and they were entertaining. It wasn't just the fact that they were nice on the eyes to men, but that was also part of it. And to say that that somehow had nothing to do with the reason why they were at G4, again, I'm gonna say, please somebody, anybody, get this bitch a helmet before she hurts herself. Now let's get back to her dog shit rant. Hey, she cooking, y'all. And that's just <laughs> obvious sexism. You don't need to explicitly objectify women or declare that you hate women to be sexist. Just go ahead and check out Thorne's latest meltdown on Twitter for some spark notes. Now, here at X-Play, our reviews are written and produced by a team of people. There are too many games for one person to shoulder the burden. So we divide and conquer. And when we use language like we or I, that's the reviewer. That's coming from the mouth and experience of the reviewer reading that review. And that's not to say that Gerard, TBH, Adam, or myself don't contribute to the reviews. We absolutely do. But it'll always be in varying degrees and take a whole team behind us. That's why we're X-Play and not Adam-Play. We have done the experiment and controlled for the variables. 
Adam will read a script written by the same writer that I will read the other half of the script for, but I'll be the one flamed. And yeah, it also happens to Gerard and TBH, but that doesn't discount the sexism of how it happens to me when it does. Now pause right here for a second, because I want to talk about something else she just said in this clip that uh, didn't even have to do with sexism. I'm going to talk about the sexism part, uh, you know, that she just talked about also, but I, I want to talk about this idea that they're not even reading their own thoughts and opinions over there at, at X Play at G4 now. Now, I don't know if this is an industry-wide practice, but I was always under the impression, I don't know about you, that when I saw Adam Sessler giving his review of a game, it was his review of said game. And then when Machine Gun Kelly here gave a review of the game, that that was her opinion of the game. But come to find out, according to her, they just have writers that write these things, and they're just the people who read those reviews out loud for us and i just thought that was kind of weird because i always thought that it was actually their thoughts and opinions and now you know according to her they quote unquote contribute to those reviews uh, in what capacity i don't know but still i always thought that it was their thoughts and opinions and not them reading the thoughts and opinions of someone else but either way regardless of how they do it there the idea that it's not called adam play because adam read a review well no shit bitch it's not just his show Adam can read a review, you can read a review, those two simps clapping for you on either side of you on that couch can read reviews, and the show can still be called X-Play. IGN has a fuck ton of people who give reviews and thoughts and opinions on games, and it's still called IGN. And I would hope that at IGN, the people giving their thoughts and opinions on games are giving their own thoughts and opinions on games. I don't know if it works the same way there, that evidently it works at X-Play, but I just thought that was kind of strange. Now let's get to the sexism portion of her comment, right? Because the only reason why she brought all that shit up in the first place was to say like, yo, someone else writes this shit that we read and Adam would read part one of that shit and you love it, but when I read part two of that shit, you hate it, right? So she's somehow trying to imply that, oh, it's sexist because you don't like when I read it, even though realistically Adam's reading the same thing. She then goes on to say though, that the same thing that happens to her, the female, happens to both of the men on the couch with her. That both of those men will also get shit because they're not Adam Sessler, who is part of G4 from back in the day. So then I ask you, if it happens to the men and the women, then how the fuck is that sexist, you dumb bitch? Maybe it has less to do with the fact that you're a woman and more to do with the fact that you guys are just not the old crew who these fucking fans want, right? Maybe these are just angry fans who want Kevin Pereira back and want Olivia Munn back and they're upset that you and those dudes on the couch are not them. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. All I know is you cannot claim it is sexism when men on the couch next to you receive the same treatment for the same shit, you fucking retard. If it happens to men and women, it cannot be sexist. Fucking idiot. Moving on. Both things can be true, that there is a general hatred of any change that isn't Adam, and that all receives special flame just for being a woman. And I wish I could turn the camera around so that you could see the incredible team that make X-Play. Half of our producers and writers are women. Emily, Abby, Megan, Joe, Jake, Zipper, Gabby, it goes on and on and on. Former writers that are now on ATOS like Vanessa. When you're in our DMs or on those YouTube comments or in Twitch chat right now, those reactionary threads thinking that I'm somehow ruining your current X-Play experience because you can't objectify me how you previously did to Morgan or that I'm somehow less qualified to speak on something but you can't quite put your finger on why even though I'm reading the exact same script as Adam but you have no problem with he's part of it. You're letting your unconscious biases ruin my day and you're gatekeeping the gaming space. Now pause here real quick, because in the beginning of this section, she makes the claim that she gets shit on specifically because she's a woman. And now while she's saying that, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, again, Olivia Munn and Morgan Webb probably never got shit for being women. If they got shit at all, it probably had nothing to do with the fact that they're women. She then goes on to say that it's men shitting on her because they can't objectify her like they did Morgan Webb and Olivia Munn. Okay, maybe that's true. Maybe that's what those dudes are doing, but that's a little bit different. They're not giving you shit because you're a woman. They're giving you a shit because you're unattractive to them, <laughs> right? They're giving you shit 
because you look like Machine Gun Kelly and that just doesn't do it for them. Now, am I saying that what they're doing is right? Fuck no. Dudes that write shit like that in comment sections and in live chats of videos are more than likely virgins that live in their fucking parents' basement because if they could go out and get pussy in real life, they wouldn't give a fuck about if the person in the show they're watching is hot enough for them to jerk off to, right? And listen, if you're watching this video and you're the type of person who does that, do me a favor and fucking stop. There's honestly no reason to write in a live chat or in a comment section of a video whether or not the person in the video is hot enough for you to fucking jerk off to. It's A, strange, and B, just fucking stupid. Now, if you want to point out that this bitch looks like Machine Gun Kelly, <laughs> you can do that shit all day, right? If you want to say, hey, you look like fucking Machine Gun Kelly, or hey, you look like a fucking dude, you know, I think that's fair game. But saying that she's not attractive enough for you to beat off to, kind of fucking weird. Now, on the flip side of that coin, um, this dumb bitch should not be an entertainment, okay? Because obviously, she has thin skin. It's not like the comment sections and the live chats are just overwhelming with comments of dudes going, You look like a fucking man. How, how am I supposed to stroke my friend's cock to this ugly man-looking bitch? What time is it? Oh, perfect. Back to Telemundo. It's weather time, baby. <laughs> <laughs> now let's be real for a second, okay? Uh, weather bitches over at Telemundo, out of control. And by the way, Frost, I'm sure she got the job because of her amazing, fantastic, top of her fucking class meteorological skills. And I, it has nothing to do with the fact that she is fucking banging, right? So it has nothing to do with the fact that she's easy on the eyes. That's not why she's there. She's there because she was the most qualified meteorologist for the job. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, okay? She's there because she can tell us the weather and she's fucking hot, okay? End of story. Don't like it? I'm sorry that you don't like it. But now let me get back to the original point I was trying to make is that I could see if the comment sections were overflowing with comments like that, right? But they're not. The overwhelming majority of comments that she gets are positive. But then she'll see one negative comment and instantly gets her fucking pussy in a twist and gets all fucking upset. Listen, if you're going to put yourself out there in any capacity, whether it's being in front of the camera or behind the camera and just putting your voice out there, you're going to receive meme comments, tweets, whatever. That's part of this game, all right? I get meme comments and shit all the time. And when I had Twitter before Twitter suspended me because they're fucking cocksuckers, I got meme tweets all the time and people name calling and talking shit. It's part of the game, baby. And if you can't take the heat, get the fuck out of the kitchen. She's obviously not cut out for this industry. Because I guarantee you that Adam Sessler also gets mean tweets and comments. By her own admission, the two dudes on the couch next to her get mean tweets and comments. Yet I don't see them going out on fucking tirades because they saw a comment they don't like. Right? So the fact that she goes on this anti-sexism tirade because of a couple comments she doesn't like when the overwhelming majority of comments are positive towards her just indicates that she's not meant to do that job. Okay? Because that's going to happen to anybody in that position. Anybody who has the privilege of having a job like hers, where she can be in front of the camera and have millions of people watch what she has to say and view her content, they're going to receive hateful comments every now and then. That's just the nature of the game. If she cannot take it, she needs to leave this industry. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, this is very much a her problem, okay? This is not an industry problem. This is very much a her problem. Because this is hardly the first time shit like this has happened to her. But we'll get back to that later. L let's just finish the rest of this dumb bitch's video first. So maybe for 2022, we'd be a bit nicer, a bit more self-reflective, and we enjoy the fact that people are working hard to make free content for you. If you don't like it, don't watch it. Peace. Yeah! Hey, hey. I got it.
I also like how, on one hand, she claims that it's X play, not Adam play. It's not just one person. It's not just one individual. It's a whole team of people. Yet she feels that she's entitled enough to speak on behalf of the entire fucking company to say, if you don't like me, fuck you, don't watch. Right? Somehow she is entitled enough to say that, even though it's not her show. But she feels she's entitled enough to go out there and say, hey, you don't like me, fuck you, don't watch. And the funny thing is, X-Play is proud of this. X-Play was like, yeah, you know, we're going to re-upload this little section in this own clip because, yeah, people need to hear this. Like, this fucking asshole was on the couch fucking clapping for her. Yeah! They were saying earlier in the video, preach! Preach, Frosk! Oh, she, she cooking them! She cooking them, Frosk! Listen, this bitch didn't cook anybody. She didn't fucking preach nothing. All she did was cry about the fact that dudes don't find her attractive. Boo fucking who. Do your job and shut the fuck up. Right? Nobody's tuning in to hear what you have to say about sexism or to hear you cry about a mean comment someone wrote to you. They tune in to X-Play and G4 to hear about gaming news. Nothing else. Nothing fucking else else and where you want to say don't like it don't watch i want to say can't take it get the fuck out and get another job you cannot eliminate the world of mean people mean people assholes motherfuckers sons of bitches they will always exist you cannot eliminate them they will always be there and anytime like i said you were in entertainment of any type whether it's a video like mine or acting in a fucking Academy Award winning movie. You're going to have hateful things, meanful things said to you. And if you can't take it, if it hurts your itty bitty feelings, then fucking go do something else. Get a job where people aren't going to say mean things to you. Oh wait, you can't, you dumb bitch. So fucking deal with it and do your fucking job. Now, I want to get back to what I was saying before about how this is very much a her problem. And I'm not saying that other people don't deal with this shit, but her going out in this tirade and her acting out because of mean things that were said to her, this is very much a her problem because I didn't know who the fuck she was, right? So I had to do some research. So who is Frosk? Well, when I did some research, I found this article on esports.net and it's got a little uh, title in one area that says, who is Froskurin or Froskurin? I don't know how to fucking pronounce her stupid esports name. But I guess her name is Indiana Black, and she is a veteran League of Legends player, coach, and then became a caster uh, over in esports. That's who she is. That's where she came from. Why isn't she there anymore? Because she left. And it's funny because in this article, there's also a whole section that says, Why do people hate Froskurin or (laughs) Froskurin, Froskurin, whatever the fuck her name is, right? Why do people hate her? I think it's kind of odd or maybe telling that she has a whole section of this article that is dedicated to why people specifically hate her. And isn't that kind of weird? Like, normally when you look up somebody, it's shit like, you know, when they were born, where they were born, what their real name is, uh, their career, uh, any milestones or highlights of their career. Shit like that, right? Not very many articles you find on individuals or news you find in individuals are going to include sections dedicated to specifically why people fucking hate them. But uh, Frost has one. (laughs) And I wonder why that is. Couldn't be because she's a fucking miserable bitch. Nah, couldn't be that. But anyway, let's, let's read some of this article about why people hate her. Now, as I read this article and for the remainder of this video, because I don't know how to pronounce her actual League of Legends name, and I think Frosk is a stupid fucking name, I'm just going to refer to her as Machine Gun Kelly. So let's read some of this article. Despite her massive fan base, Machine Gun Kelly does frequently receive unwanted hate posts on the League of Legends Reddit, posts pointing out superficial things like her looks or what Machine Gun Kelly did wrongly while commentating a match. Her blunt callouts and even some personal attacks were part of her daily content cycle. Now, of course, as a caster, the occasional heated discussion and criticisms are unavoidable. But towards Machine Gun Kelly, it was all baked in with other compliments by some very toxic personalities. However, disregarding some of the blatant hate messages, there is constructive criticism that Machine Gun Kelly could work on. Yet, more often than not, she would respond with a repulsive comment back at the entire League of Legends community for not accepting her. (laughs) So basically... In between all the shit comments she got, 
there was constructive criticism that she could actually take to work on whatever criticisms people had of her. But instead, she would rather fucking sit there and attack the entire League of Legends fucking community for not quote-unquote accepting her. I'm sorry, this bitch has thin skin. And it's not just at X-Play, it was even within the entire community of which she has a quote-unquote massive fan base. Okay, this, this next part is another great part, right? Some of the comments she would say often victimizes herself, where she announces that she gives up or will retire from the scene soon. Victimizes herself? You don't say. <laughs> Fucking dumb bitch. Now, to further illustrate the type of hateful, angry person that Machine Gun Kelly is, she would tweet things like this. Now look, I don't care what your political leanings are. I don't care if you're left, right, center, libertarian, Republican, Democrat. I do not care. Doesn't matter to me. But when you tweet things like this, whether it's at Trump or someone doing it at Biden, it's just angry, hateful shit. And it's incredibly divisive, okay? Listen, my family has owned multiple businesses my entire life. And as a family, we definitely have certain political leanings. But we never let that shit known. Why? Because our customers are Republicans, our customers are Democrats, our customers are everything in between. So we're not going to say or do anything to upset half of our customer base. There's no reason. The whole point of a business is to cast the widest net possible and bring in as many customers as possible. When you say and do shit like she does, shit that's divisive, you're going to eliminate possible customers, possible viewers, possible fans, possible subscribers. That's not how you run a fucking business. I guess it is now in modern day times because businesses love to put out all kinds of divisive tweets and comments and shit. But it's not the way you're supposed to run a business, right? I remember this great uh, uh, story about Michael Jordan back in the day where the, the left wanted Michael Jordan to come out and say something against the right or, or Republicans or a politician. I forget what it was. But this is when, you know, the Jordans were a thing. You know, Jordans were a big thing. They still are a big thing. But he was trying to sell sneakers, Michael Jordan. And they wanted him to say something, and Michael Jordan was like, I'm not doing that. Republicans buy sneakers, too. The man was smart enough to know, like, yo, I'm trying to fucking sell these sneakers. And if I say something to piss off half this country, I'm probably going to eliminate half my possible customers. That's not how you run a business. But evidently, uh, Machine Gun Kelly and X-Play... They have no problem with their divisive tweets and comments. Adam Sessler's the same way. Adam Sessler's always going out there and throwing out very political tweets that are incredibly divisive. And yes, you can, you know, tweet personal shit in your personal life, but you have to also understand that you have an attachment to this company. You are now representing this company. So even though it may be your personal Twitter, things that you say are still reflective upon the company for which you work. But again, it seems that X-Play doesn't care because they're proud of this shit and they made this shit a separate video like, yeah, people need to see this. Yeah, yeah, Machine Gun Kelly, preach. Preach, Machine Gun Kelly. But obviously, like I said and like I've shown, this is not a problem at X-Play or a problem within the industry. This seems to be something that follows her everywhere she goes. Everywhere she goes, she gets treated like shit for some reason or she gets hate comments. Now, like I said, everybody gets hate comments. But for her to fucking act all fucking pissed off and get all angry and have these angry tirades, that's a her problem. Clearly, when she worked at League of Legends, part of her daily fucking content was her just talking back and talking shit to people who said mean comments to her. That was part of her daily shit. This is very much a Machine Gun Kelly problem. And she needs to fucking either get out of this job or fucking... Deal with it. Nobody fucking cares that some golem nerd in his parents' basement told you that you're too ugly to jerk off to. Nobody fucking cares. And you come off sounding entitled, like trans women who fucking demand that men be attracted to them, even though they clearly look like dudes still. That's how you sound. And I'm sorry that you have chosen to look like a man. Not my fault. You made that decision. If dudes don't like that, I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. Most dudes like attractive women. You're not an attractive woman, I'm sorry. Or maybe you might be attractive to some people, not attractive to me. Not to fucking harp on your looks, right? But to me, you're not an attractive woman. I do not find you attractive. 
Now, am I going to go out and say evil, hateful, mean shit? No. But you have to understand that you're probably going to get some of that. And you obviously know that you're going to get some of that because you get it everywhere you go. We all know that the gaming community is among one of the most toxic because it's filled with juvenile people, right? That's the gaming community. Very toxic. You know what the gaming community is like. Deal with it. Deal with it and fucking move on. You get to be part of X-Play, like you said, part of G4, something that you grew up with, something that you are, you love working there, you're so happy and proud to be working there. Then just work there and shut the fuck up. Nobody cares about dudes who don't find you attractive saying mean things. Nobody. And at the same time, look, women, if there are any women watching this, which there probably aren't because in my analytics, my channel tends to be more men uh, subscribed, but I think that's also gaming in general tends to be a male-dominated industry and culture. But regardless, if there are any women watching, can we just agree on the fact that you can't stop people from saying mean things? Huh? Can we, can we at least understand that that's going to happen? And then can we also fucking clear this shit up? Because I'm tired of, on one hand, women saying, don't objectify us. We're not pieces of meat to oogle and ogle. Stop sexualizing us. And then on the other hand, all I see when I scroll through YouTube is TikTok shorts of bitches dancing to Simple Dimple with their tits out or fucking Big Bank shaking their ass and twerking. It's like, well, which is it? Do we not sexualize you? Or do we sexualize you because you are intentionally sexualizing your fucking selves? Which is it? Because how do we understand and know what to do? Because on one hand, we have women say, don't sexualize us. And let's be real, it's usually the ugly ones who don't get sexualized anyway. Hate to break it to you. But on one hand, we have women saying, don't sexualize us. And then on the other hand, we have women who intentionally sexualize themselves and use their physical appearance to get them jobs and roles and whatever other opportunities that those looks will give them. So which is it? Because if you're going to sexualize yourself, then I have no problem sexualizing you. So you women need to get on the same fucking page. Either no sexualization of women, or yes, we can sexualize women. But you can't say don't sexualize us at all, and then when it's convenient, use your sexuality and your sexual looks and appearance to benefit you. Sorry, bitch, it don't work both ways. If we cannot sexualize you, if sexualizing you is bad, then don't use your tits to try to get free drinks at a bar. Don't use your tits to try to get out of speeding tickets. Don't use your body and sexuality to get you jobs, advance your career, none of that shit. It's either all or nothing. I'm sorry, because I'm tired of this shit. I'm tired of hearing we can't sexualize women. I'm tired of having Western developers make women in games less and less physically attractive because somehow that's desexualizing women. Yet at the same time, like I said, you got all these fucking bitches in TikTok dancing and twerking with their tits spilling out and doing all kinds of super sexual shit while at the same time complaining about sexism and complaining about being treated like meat or being objectified. The fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. How many fucking YouTubers are there? Female YouTubers, specifically, who have large followings and it has nothing to do with the fact that their content is good or the things they have to say are nice. It is specifically because they're hot, they know it, and they use it to their advantage. How many? Oh, a lot. So, again, bitches, get on the same fucking page because either sexualization of women is bad and men can't do it and if men can't do it then women cannot use it or benefit from it or it's all free game end of fucking story and if we're gonna sit here and act like men are not objectified as well then we're not being honest because if you're gonna tell me that dudes in the Calvin Klein fucking ads and billboards in their fucking underwear, that ad is for men to be like, oh yeah, those underwear look nice. I think I might buy those underwear. You think that dude in that ad was for men? When Ashton Kutcher started off as a fucking Calvin Klein model, you think that those ads that he were in were for men? No, those ads are for women. Those models are for women. And I don't see women complaining about men being objectified and modeling as. I don't see any women, I saw not one woman come out and complain about Magic Mike being the objectification of men. Because if Magic Mike 
is not the objectification of men, then there is no such thing as objectification of women. So again, all or nothing. Figure it out and shut the fuck up. That's all I got for you guys on this one. And that's the video, guys. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Do you agree with the shit I'm saying? Do you side with Machine Gun Kelly? And then any women, if you're listening, can, can we agree on any of the shit that I just said, please? Is it too much to ask for you to not be hypocrites? Huh? But anyway, like I said, let me know down in the comments. And as always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next Supernova. Nova out.